Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to the second installment of, I guess, the second long-term attempt at doing a custom faction and doing a custom campaign, probably, in From the Depths. So last time I showed off the basic pre premise of the uh, first faction, the starter faction, in what I am just for now calling the Canoe Megiddon uh, setting, and I've reached a decision. So... The previous idea with the Hawa Confederation, Hawa literally standing for Heavy Armor, Wood, Alloy, was that they would use, well, those materials, Heavy Armor, Wood, and Alloy. And then I had a little bit of an experiment. So, uh, you'll note that in the unnamed craft section, because these things still don't have names, I would really, like, you know, I need help with names, guys. I'm, ju I'm just straight up asking help. I don't know what to call these things. I don't know what kind of themes this faction has yet. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the old blueprints, uh, just how a Cruiser 1 and how a Large Cruiser, which honestly is more of a battle barge now, uh, those are gone, um, but uh, it, they've been replaced with how a Cruiser 1, no heavy armor and alloy, because uh, you really gotta love the armor retrofit tool, it's absolutely wonderful, and I'm finding that these things are way more viable and kind of more fun to fight uh, once you remove the heavy armor and alloy because I acknowledged fully in the, the round one of this custom campaign thing that heavy armor uh, behind wooden alloy is a terrible armor scheme. Some people disagree, some people think that's uh, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna be bold and just say yeah, no, because uh, it's just it just does not work well. What you end up with, craft, uh, what you end up with, uh, like I said, is craft that are very material inefficient because their armor is simultaneously expensive and fragile. Uh, they don't float well, and like it just doesn't work very well. You have to kind of go uh, fully commit on one way or the other. And from the depths, generally, is either you have uh, things which are cheap, uh, or you have craft which are just over overall very expensive. So, uh, what we're doing now is a, cra is a faction, basically the new thing we're going to be doing here with is that they use nothing but wood, reinforced wood, and applique in uh, all the bits that really matter. So you see there's reinforced wood, and uh, wood there, so this is like, I'm probably going to have to go back and retrofit all these damn things all over again, like repeatedly, because, you know, that's how it goes with faction design. And, uh, but this seems to work a lot better. This is considerably cheaper and lighter. It floats better. This armor scheme, um, on the side here, this kind of, like, wood, reinforced wood, and wood again, uh, with the wood slopes, uh, is not super good, but it's, uh, bad in a way that's kind of more fun to do and a lot easier to do, as a matter of fact. And, yeah, reinforced wood, by the way, is still not the most materially efficient craft. Not materially efficient craft. Materially efficient material, by the way, because, uh, as I've said in previous videos, unrelated to this custom uh, campaign thing, uh, you get better results just by actually mixing wood and metal, as opposed to just, you know, using reinforced wood. Use reinforced wood mainly, as you know, as to make the deck pretty, without it being as flimsy as regular wood, but this seems to be working quite fine, and just so uh, everyone is aware, this thing could still uh, completely dominate uh, something more expensive than it. Admittedly, Deep Water Guard designs not being incredibly um, formidable opponents, but the, yeah, the heat shells, the heat frag on this uh, little cruiser uh, definitely helps, because uh, they kind of make a mess of anything else that's made of wood. And they just reach for the metal, and uh, these, the, the, this faction is very much getting more deep water guard-like in implementation. And essentially, they're made of wood, they're made of fragile materials, uh, but they're glass cannons, so to speak. Uh, they they shoot things, and uh, they've got decent firepower uh, that just doesn't stand up particularly well to any form of active defense. Also, people have mentioned that uh, the uh, Broadside 2.0 is kind of broken. I'm not sure if that's just an alpha test, because I've had good results with it before. But they try and, you know, go parallel to whatever, you know, to whatever is flying at it. Which is incredibly annoying, because I don't want it to do that. I want this fella to be 90 degrees right now, and it's just not doing it. The whole point of not having a minimum range on this thing is so that it doesn't do this. And yet, that's what it's doing. It's flying away straight in the line, and... 
I don't know, I'm not sure how to fix that. It's quite irritating. Also, the fact that Atlas doesn't really... Like, I think the, uh... If any of the Cottles are watching, the Keepers of the Lore, I think the Atlas might be a little bit too... Uh, restrictive in the elevation... Uh, whatchamacallit, in the elevation restrictions on its guns, because it could... I think it could totally shoot me right now, but it's not doing that. So anyway, uh, what else can we talk about? So, possibly the biggest changes to the custom faction is how what I've done to our battle barge, which is called the large cruiser, and uh, I have built a new airship. So let's start with what I've changed uh, with our uh, big friend here. So large cruiser, no HNL. Uh, you'll notice there's another craft in here, but we'll get to that uh, right now, in fact. So here is our revised Hawa cruiser, uh, considerably uh, cheaper pound for pound than she was before, uh, but she's got a lot more stuff. So first things first, a l number of people suggested, and I totally agree, uh, that uh, a big flat deck like this uh, makes for a great aircraft carrier, and that's exactly what I've done here. There's a little helipad right here, which I'm quite proud of, and uh, we've spawned in a helicopter. So let's let's talk about the helicopter a little bit. So. This is actually a retrofitted design from ages ago. I did a uh, wooden canoe playthrough of the Nitro campaign, just on regular difficulty, or it, may, it might have been on easy, actually, I don't remember. Anyway, that was great fun. I think that's one of the most, uh, that's some of the most fun I've ever had playing through the campaign, so I do recommend uh, giving that a watch uh, if you're interested, because it's a whale of a time. Last uh, The last stream of that is hilarious, because I'm just really tired. And so this thing just needed a little bit of retrofitting. It's got the new propellers uh, instead of the old Deddy Blades. It's got a whatever this whatever this kind of rotor arrangement in the back is called. And just needed some sprucing up here, there, and everywhere. And uh, it's made out of, well, here's... Oh, hold on. 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 Metal. Change that to reinforced wood because we got to be consistent. So that's a terrible idea, by the way. So <laughs> probably shouldn't have done that. But anyway, uh, so this thing, it's actually uh, the original incarnation of this particular craft. It had a little laser underneath it, but uh, the Howard Confederation, by the way, does not use lasers. Um, so it's instead got two large uh, HE frag missiles, which really hurt, by the way. And I just like this thing. It's uh, very nice occasionally just to have a small craft, quickly retrofit it. It's a front sider, it uh, zigzags back and forth. And it's actually kind of good at drawing fire away from its uh, bigger buddy. Or at least uh, when certain things are set up. So, we've got the helipad, we've got a whole bunch of uh, missile interceptors right here, because uh, for something with a radar signature as big as this, like decoys don't really work that well, and I'm getting more and more fond of missile interceptors as controlled by a SeaWiz controller uh, all the while. So, what else can we talk about? What else can we talk about? There, there's cram mortars in the front here, they're not amazing. Uh, they've just got uh, HE and fragments set to 90 degrees, and they are using... Uh, the kind of uh, 3D uh, 3D Tetris that works so well in a, a 3x3 space. It's just we got... Uh, wait a minute. Oh no! Oh no, bro! They're, they're not set up right. Damn it! <laughs> Crap. Oh, jeez. That's embarrassing. Now, now what? Now see what I must do. See what I must do? I must fix my horrible mistakes. And hopefully I can remember to do that off camera. Oh dear. Oh dearie me. Oh dearie dearie. Dearie me. Why have you done this thing? Okay, whatever. I'll fix that eventually. So yeah, it's got cram borders in the front. Just a little bit of extra firepower. Large missiles are still there. And missile interceptors. The insides are a little bit interesting. Because now, instead of uh, that kind of... Uh, uh, checkerboard of wood and alloy that was uh, what it was doing before now it's a checkerboard of wood and reinforced wood which is interesting it's not super good um, it's just slightly tougher than nothing but wood but it's just you know it's it's HP spam and these diagonal wood slopes in here are kind of utter, honestly that's just that's just air gap filler really because uh, these things uh, this thing is not particularly well armored I wouldn't say armor's just a hit point heavy, but that's it. It does get blown up a lot. And in particular, when the turrets get blown up, so allow me to demonstrate what happens uh, when these turrets get blown up, because they're full of high explosive and frag. Uh, there's some applique here that does absolutely nothing in order to stop 
uh, these things blowing up. Uh, when they get blown up, uh, they tend to take out the uh, either the AI compartment uh, or the lambs and engines. So, I am going back and forth on whether to leave it like that because, quite frankly, it's kind of hilarious. Remembering this is meant to be the start of faction, it's not meant to be super meta in every single sense. Um, or whether I should redo these APS and, like, you know, stick ejectors in them because I can totally do that. I have the power. But to show you what I mean, uh, what happens when you have, oh, I don't know, a giant explosion, um, a cram type explosion happen on the deck? Uh, that's one, that's two. Oh, that's holding out much better than I thought it would. So, yeah, there uh, the lambs and the uh, engines get taken out slightly, which is a uh, no bueno, and the thing immediately stops moving as a direct result. And over here, it's uh, even better. And... Interesting! Why didn't you explode? There you exploded! And... Yep, so that... Uh, thankfully the AI itself is at the other end of this, but yeah, I need to rethink that a little bit, and I would... Let me know down in the comments if you think it'll be more fun, because bear in mind, that's the whole point of a... Of a custom campaign is that above all else it should be fun it should be fun to fight these things it'd be fun to have them shoot at you fun to have the to blow them up and uh let's uh, your barrels did not be visual so by the way we're not doing the whole uh, tractor beam thing uh, with the sub vehicles because i actually don't see the point really i need to move that because the helicopter's nose is actually sitting on top of it um, I have not done the tractor beam thing with this because it's kind of unnecessary because in the campaign when this thing rolls around and when it spawns in uh, the helicopter is going to immediately take off anyway so don't really see the point of that uh, so yeah that's uh, that's basically it with uh, this uh, cruiser there's definitely things uh, to oh yeah I have added detection to the turrets themselves because for once in my miserable existence I left them off which uh, all that really does is it means it gets blinded more easily because uh, for whatever reason, and I generally test this thing against the crossbones, uh, the crossbones loves going for this superstructure up here and I'm not sure why, it's not that black block spammy. Oh, and I should mention I, uh, I made the lambs a bit bigger. I probably could make them even bigger. I could extend them back here because I think we have the engine power for it. I think I might just do that. Uh, but let's uh, let's uh, let's fight the crossbones uh, quickly. So let's go here. Interesting thing with the new crossbones, and yes, people have pointed out it's less of a retrofit, more of a complete rebuild. Is that um, uh, it seems to want to prioritize shooting the helicopter for some reason, which is hilarious to me. Uh, disable the repair tentacles. So there goes the oh dear, that missed. So the Seawiz on the new crossbones is actually pretty good. It shoots down large missiles. means that you can't just spam missiles willy-nilly against the Deepwater Guard. You can spam hash shells, though. Where are those landing? Those are going to miss horribly. And as you can see, the crossbones, for some reason, wants to shoot that helicopter. Probably because its firepower percentage is very high. Although you're going to see in a second what happens when the crossbones decides to... Yep, there we go. So uh, this thing is made out of thick cardboard, but still uh, not particularly strong cardboard. So it takes out some of them, and then bang, bang, bang. Ouch. You took out my missile compartment. How dare you? Uh, are you going to turn around, or did that... Nope, that turret didn't get disabled. So the, this thing can beat the crossbones, but it's the kind of fight, it's not a one-sided fight. Uh, this thing uh, does, uh, this thing does get blown up slightly. Also those interceptors don't do super well at dealing with the crossbone shells, because friggin' flash suppressors actually wow. So this is why just, when in doubt, just you know, spamming a mixture of wood and some other kind of material works really well, because I think that was uh, a full volley from two crossbones turrets. And it didn't actually get all the way through, even though it had every single right to. Yep, and there, yep. Whee! Yay! <laughs> there goes that turret, so fun. I kind of think, you know, like, I'm starting to think of, like, backstory and lore for this thing. 
Uh, very much kind of an improvised, uh, like, battle barge kind of thing. Not designed from scratch, even though it technically was, uh, to be a fighting craft, but it's just kind of an all-rounder thing. Uh, hence the timed fuse main guns, and uh, the helipad on the back. So it's just like, borders are threatened, quickly stick guns on a, on a barge, stick mortars on a barge. That was a very good mortar shot, Deacon's Christmas. Yeah, that's starting to make a mess of things. And how's the copter doing? Uh, the copter is off doing coptery things over there, distracting exactly half the guns, which is hilarious. Yay, there goes the other turret. Fun! <laughs> so when I say this thing can beat the crossbones, it does kind of depend on whether the crossbones gets its eye in and takes out the main guns. Which is like, well, like I say, maybe I should uh, redo the main guns on this thing to have ejectors and whatnot. Uh, because uh, you're not going to come right just with um, armoring the internals. Oh dear. Yay, fun. Bang. Bang, 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 bang. And if nothing else, the crossbones is apparently going to have a lot of trouble shooting, uh, shooting the copter down. So the, the premise of this faction is that their ships are kind of meh, uh, but their airships are considerably better. And uh, the helicopter is actually evidence of that right there. It's bouncing around, it's having a good time. And I should show you the airship I built for this thing, because it's fun and hilarious. So, this is something I've been meaning to do for a while, actually. It's this kind of airship with guns both on the top and bottom, uh, like the Great Talons do. And we came up with this thing, which probably also needs a name. And also, uh, the rotors are, frankly, mainly decoration, because uh, this has a lot of custom jets in it. And I'm so happy that on the custom jet tutorial I did the other day... Uh, people uh, told me that it's actually more efficient just to have more jets and not bother with the extra, you know, the add-ons and stuff like that. Because it actually makes placing them a lot easier. So I'm like, yahoo! Awesome! So this thing has ten little custom jets in here. And um, actually more than that. It has, uh, it has twenty. So lots of redundancy. Redundancy is very good for airships. And let's go. It's got the ducts and it's got these APS guns. got a rubber compartment, which can't hold all the stuff that really needs to be in rubber, so kind of goof there. We've got an engine back here, it's got two custom jets back here, max speed is around 80 meters per second. It's got, I forgot it had camo uh, on the tail fins back there. And uh, yeah, so talking about the guns, these things are 48 millimeters, belt feds, and the shell is kind of fun. The shell is similar thing, mixture of HE frag. In this case, it's a uh, heat frag, which seems to do the trick quite nicely. And the frag angle is set to 60 degrees because I'm finding more and more that that kind of does pretty well. And I'm not going, I'm not being super fussy about the math. And interesting thing about this is, by the way, this is deco steam pipes because I thought that'd be fun. I experimented with heat decoys and radar decoys and stuff like that, and testing it against the Banshee, which is possibly a bit much, uh, remembering that the criteria for this faction is that they should be able to be on equal footing with the Deepwater Guard, perhaps more so, uh, but not necessarily any other need of faction, but I was testing this against the Banshee, and what seem really seems to work well is uh, missile interceptors and lots of them. So this is a little Sea Wiz turret down here. And we've got uh, munition warners uh, just in the middle there. Probably could add them on the ends, actually. And yeah, so this thing uh, does super good. And it does just fine against the Banshee. It's a pretty even fight. Uh, because uh, she shoots down all the missiles and just uh, essentially does scratch damage. So the DPS is not super high. Uh, she's kind of poking through. Uh, at the Banshee, zapping off uh, the odd uh, bits and pieces. There goes a surge protector, there goes a laser thing. This thing has lasers? Does this have lambs? Am I crazy? Am I cuckoo crazy? Uh, but yeah, so the missile interceptors seem to do a pretty decent job at uh, intercepting missiles. And uh, what missiles do get through, they kind of scratch the paint and that's all they do. So I'm getting really quite fond of missile interceptors. Uh, as controlled by a Seawiz turret, uh, like I said before. And we're going scratch, scratch, scratch at the Banshee, and it's super good. So, I have uh, embraced the bouncy cheese here, so 
you'll see that this thing uh, it stays at one height and then it bounces to another assuming it does it actually pretty good angle to yep okay there you can see it goes bounce and then it drops out of the sky a little bit and if you're wondering how to do that it's actually kind of simple so let's just listen to the soothing sound of gunfire for a second. So what we have here, we have a PID. Wait, no, it's over here. So we have a PID. It's set to control bottom vertical. Actually, that's loud. Let's turn that off. Okay, so turn that back on. So altitude above terrain and waves, artificial set point of blah blah blah. Uh, gain is that. Integral is that. Derivative time is that. And uh, it's got two ACBs on either side. Uh, that are set on a timer. So value is about 10 seconds. And then every 10 seconds, this one sets the value, the fake point of the PID to 150. And the factor range is only 3 meters, so it only does this one. You can do the uh, block naming trick in order to, uh, in order to, like, you know, uh, make it even more precise. Uh, I might have just goofed that. And then the other one is. Uh, doing the same thing but it's set to a different value and I believe that the priority of these guys uh, is the same so 10 seconds and every 10 seconds but this one has a delay on it so go over here and the where is it yep there it is effect delay on this one is five so that's how you get uh, with a PID, just a bouncy airship like this, which makes a huge difference. Um, it means that a lot of things uh, have trouble hitting this. Like, even the paddle gunner, and just watch me being be completely proved wrong by this. Uh, it's, where are you? Where are you? Uh, the, like, even stuff. where is it? Where the hell did you go? Why are you an easy? Oh, right, it's because shields were nerfed. So even stuff like the paddle gunner uh, actually has a little bit of trouble hitting this thing. Uh, the shots tend to whiff either over or under it. So you see there, a lot of shots are going high, and then it bounces up, and a lot of shots go low. And it's got a lovely little airship-style spaced armor here, uh, with layers of reinforced wood, which means it actually does kind of well. And both little guns. Incidentally, if you want a real good minigun look, uh, that is a... What is that? That is a... Where is it? 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 That is a small wheel uh, right there. Uh, just uh, modified a little bit. Actually, no, it's not a small wheel. What the hell was it? It was something else. Was it a medium wheel? Ah, yes, it was a medium wheel. Or something like that. Any but I just realized I haven't painted the vents. Something exploded. It looks like it was the paddle gunner. So, so yeah, I think this thing does okay. Of course, uh, even uh, this thing has absolutely no laser defense at all. So uh, if you're worried about this campaign being too hard, uh, don't be because uh, a decent laser will shoot this down in no time. Uh, fast APS, or just you know, you know, chuck large missiles at it. Like, I think actually, let's see. What happens? This is 70,000. What happens if we chuck an iron cordon at it? This thing might be able to deal with an iron cordon, but then again, it might not. Let's say I just love the way these guns sound. Interesting. Let's see here. Wow, this thing can actually uh, deal with the uh, missile. Sw whoa, whoa, whoa! Can it though? It can. Whoopsie Daisy! I might have spammed the missile interceptors too much. I might have actually made an airship that's kind of good. Wee! And just to give you an idea of the cost difference, this thing is 70,000 materials, and uh, the iron cordon is 300,000. So, for the cost of these interceptors, we are absolutely uh, Tyrannosaurus Rexing uh, these large missiles. It's fantastic. We're not doing a hell of a lot of damage in return, though. But yeah, that's how the cookie crumbles. Let's see. 
What are the bullets doing? The bullets are uh, ignoring the lambs because that's what lambs do. And we're not really doing a hell of a lot against... Well, we are taking out shields, so that's nice. I always forget that spamming small APS actually gets very good results sometimes. Oh, the crams look different. Yay. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, wow, you did it. <laughs> Woof. I could even turn these uh, little APS guns into uh, a mini Seawiz, but I have to drop the heat shell. Uh, the heat head, rather. So yeah, I'm liking the way this custom faction is going. And by the way, I have plotted out uh, the other four. There's only going to be five of them. Uh, so if you've got any uh, suggestions for what else we can had, add uh, to the Hawa Confederation, uh, do let me know. Like, interesting airship designs. Uh, they don't have to be canoe uh, canoes specifically, but some kind of canoe shape hidden in the design uh, would be super dope. So yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths Custom Faction Design. Farewell.